Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from the Joy 99.7 FM studios, Kokumlemle in Accra, a digital address GA0993341, also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country, including Pad FM in Damongo, Jubilee FM in Keta, and Sunshine FM in Boko. It's on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, Digibank, Let's Go, Super Sim Cement, Build Your Dream, and Telesol 4G, Just a Touch. In this edition, as heads of universities nationwide begin to deal with sexual har harassment incidents, there are calls for anti-sexual harassment policies to be introduced at the senior high school level as well. I think they can create some counselling committees that will help the girls who get sexually harassed. We'll hear from some students, also we'll hear from media personality Nanaba Namwa, who says she's had to change her number every month due to constant harassment send you videos. I mean, how can you take a picture of me and record yourself ranking over my page? And I was getting that all the time, so I had to change my number. And now I change my number every month or every two months. Angry Fulanis in the northern region accuse officials of the National Identification Authority of harassment as they are turned away from participating in the registration exercise. We'll speak live with officials of the NIA as they respond to these accusations in sports. Disqualified GFA presidential aspirant Rufa Sekuku has been backed by a former regional football association chairman to contest this disqual disqualification at the court of arbitration for sport. A looming crisis, Ghana Water Company warns of shortage as water level in Owabi Dam in Ashanti region, which supplies about one third of the commodity there, drops in depth from 21 feet to 6 feet. I mean, it's getting close to almost a shutdown. They are suffering seriously from this sand winning, and we have to take it seriously. Or else, Ghanaians will. We'll wake up one day to find out that no water is running through our tax. We're here from the PRC, which is warning the situation could result in high tariffs. We we'll also have the Breast Cancer Minute. All that and more here on the Midday News with me, MFA Apao. And it's been five days or so since the BBC aired its Sex for Greats documentary, which sparked outrage and introduced a whole new conversation on what constitutes sexual harassment. We've heard from students both from the University of Ghana and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Now, even as the Association of Vice Chancellors Ghana says, it will operationalize and tackle the issue of so-called sex for greats. We'll hear from more students on this matter soon. But first, listen to this report by my colleague Justin. As they do. Professor Ebenezer Owusu looks calm and collected. His mood seems opposite to the current situation of the institution he leads, the University of Ghana. It's so bad that we think our image has been parted. He has just stepped out of a meeting of dons of universities in Ghana, which is chairing, to talk to me about what he would do to check the issue of so called sex for grades captured in this week's expose by British broadcaster, the BBC. It has raised us awareness of what is happening in institutions in the nation. And I think it's time that we all get together and make sure that we try and, and, and curb it. Back at the University of Ghana, the school at the center of the scandal, students go about their day-to-day -day activities I think they can create some counseling committees that will help the girls who get sexually harassed so they go there for help. It is not only female that they harass sexually. Men are equally involved or men are equally harassed. Some people claim they are threatened by those abusing them. These are difficult times for this school. Two of its staff involved in the film have already been asked to go home. But for the thousands of students who continue to study here, it seems, university administrators have more to do in restoring confidence and save its credibility that is now on the line. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Accra. So we've checked on the situation in the 
KNUST and also at the University of Ghana in terms of the policies and when it comes to sexual harassment. But what's the situation at the University of Cape Coast? My colleague Richard Kujonyako has been to the campus to check all that and joins us on the line. So Richard, what did you find at the University of Cape Coast? Well, I'm I'm still on campus and immediately um, the BBC uh, documentary was aired. Um, Some students and past students uh, who uh, come from the University of Cape Coast said they pinched them that the BBC did not extend their lenses to the University of Cape Coast because it is one of the things that has also been bedeviling uh, the institution. They did not talk about only lectures, but they widened the scope to teaching assistant and research assistant as well. How, I mean, they they sleep with girls uh, to uh, change their grades or to help them improve their performances. It is not only mentioned about uh, sex, but they also mention about harassment, how some lecturers also chase students, even if they wouldn't even want to do it, they chase them and they would want to do something about them. But as to whether these cases have been reported or received some report at the Gender uh, Anti-Sexual Harassment Committee at the University of Cape Coast, we are here to determine. Well, but you got to speak to the school authorities. What did they tell you? Well, they told me that while well, people are too shy, they, they, they do not want to talk about it, even though they discuss them with friends and the others who speak with some guidance and counseling um, coordinators in the school. They tell you that uh, these are some of the cases that come to them that have received attention, but they don't go to the anti-sexual, um, uh, anti-harassment uh, committee to report such matters. Well, that's uh, Richard Kojonyako. We also have on the other line Dr. Georgina Odro. She's coordinator for Center for Gender and Advocacy at the University of Cape Coast, and she also uh, joins us on the line. Okay, so it looks like uh, Dr. Odro is yet to uh, join us on the line. We've lost uh, Dr. Odro there. I uh, would get back to uh, Dr. Odro to find out the anti-sexual harassment policy at the University of Cape Coast. But whilst we wait, uh, where do we draw the line between sexual harassment and flirtation? Gender consultant Dinah Adiku has been explaining. We'll hear from her. But let's work the lines once again. And uh, Dr. Georgina Odro, coordinator, Center for Gender and Advocacy. We are grateful uh, for your time here on the Midday News. So we've heard from our reporter and how students do not um, come forward uh, to report cases of sexual harassment. But we've checked the policy at the University of Ghana as well as the uh, KNUST. What's the situation at the University of Cape Coast when it comes to anti-sexual harassment? Okay, good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, so at the University of Cape Coast, we also have a sexual harassment policy. This policy has been in place since 2007 and then a new edition 2015. So we've had this policy all this while. And we also have an existing sexual harassment committee that handles all reported cases. So University of Cape Coast, like my, uh, the other universities, also have sexual harassment policy and then committees in place to handle such cases when reported. But do we have students coming forward, at least to these committees, to report cases of sexual harassment? They do. They do report. But then the frequency, because most of the time from the grapevine, we do hear a lot, but it doesn't commensurate with the number of reported cases. And it has to do to me with the Ghanaian culture of silences. You know, um, when you're reporting a case of sexual harassment, it's not just about you, but then the stigma that often goes with it, the pointing of hands, and sometimes if you're not careful, the victimization that might um, ensue after the reporting. So, but we've had few success cases. We didn't say that the committee is just sitting and it's idle. There have been some few reported cases, but we wish it would be more than what we currently have because of what we hear from the grapevine. Well, but there have been also talk about uh, lecturers also complaining about students seducing them. Do we have cases like that also uh, before you? Yeah, we do hear certain things as well, but we always argue that it also has to do with the culture. Why would uh, students seduce particular lecturers but not all lecturers? These are questions that we'll have to ask. The fact that you may be encouraging it is why they would want to seduce you. Because we have more than 700 lecturers in the system. And then few names are important to students who would want to take advantage of sex lecturers. So we always argue that considering that sexual harassment is a power issue, it's a power relational issue. It's about someone with power and then using the power of the position to entice another. So if you are a lecturer, discourage sex practice if possible. Because if you encourage it, then the students also know that when it comes to this particular lecture, I can use other means to reach him or her. So that is 
our uh, view on that. We are indeed grateful for your time. That's Dr. Georgina Odro. She's coordinator, Center for Gender and Advocacy at the University of Cape Coast. My colleague, PSA and Anaya Osafo, is at the Accra High School because there have been talk that uh, such policies should also be introduced at the senior high school levels. And PSA is with some students, and uh, he joins us on the line. He's been interacting with them. Uh, do we have PSA on the line? PSA, if you can hear me, what have the students of Accra High School been telling you when it comes to sexual harassment? Well, it doesn't look like we have PSA and Anaya Osafu joining us. We'll work the line once again. But let's hear from uh, gender consultant uh, Dinah Adiku on sexual harassment and flirtation. Where do we draw the line? Any, anytime I see you in this particular dress, uh, I begin to feel like making, you know, yeah. that's yeah. beyond flirtation. Yeah. It gets now into harassment, yeah. particularly if I don't like it. And most importantly, if I told you once before that I don't like this kind of correspondence and you come back with it again, you are harassing and the systems would have to activate it to take you on. Meanwhile, media personality Nana Banamoa says she's had to change her number almost every month because many people have been sending her inappropriate materials. I, I ran into a man that I, I respected so much. He had never seen me in person. And he said, oh, I didn't know your chest was this full. And at that particular moment, all the respect fizzled out. And I dealt with him that don't you ever, ever, like even in your wildest dreams, ever say this to me again and i told them off you know and then there are times when people will send you messages they'll send you videos i mean how can you take a picture of me from my page and record yourself one king over my page and you reach orgasm and you think that if i send this to nana on whatsapp she she should feel so good about herself that is harassment and i was getting that all the time when i was using my um 0244 for whatsapp so i had to change my number and now i change my number every month or every two months and that that's that's very uncomfortable for me but i have to do it now they've stopped doing it on whatsapp because they don't have access to my number they come to my dm that wraps up the discussion on sexual harassment here on the Midday News. Let's move on to some other stories now. Some Fulanis in the northern region are angry at what they describe as harassment handed them by officials of the National Identification Authority at some centers. Now, there have been reports of some of these in residents being turned away from registration centers, even though they meet all the requirements that qualifies them as Ghanaians to register for the Ghana card. One of such alleged harassment took place at one of the centers in the Tamale South constituency yesterday. Martina Bugri witnessed it and reports. At the Dabokwa Sakafat School, officials at the center seized Hamid Abukari's Ghana card. He had come with to vote for his brother Umar Abukari. He said even though they had all the requirements, his brother was refused registration and he detained. I came with my brother Umar for him to register for the Ghana card. He has a birth certificate and a passport and I also have the same requirements, including a Ghana card, which I acquired since December at Medina. So I came to guarantee for him because I have been seeing it as the requirement. But when I came, I was told I am a Fulani, and all Fulanis are not Ghanaians, but they confiscated my card and detained me and said they were calling the police to arrest me because I acquired it through illegal means. General Secretary of the Fulani Welfare Group, Alaji Musa Yakubu Bari, who spoke to Joy News, said they have received several complaints from Sola, Jimli, Yendi, among other areas of similar harassment. From Accra, we learned that in the northern region and the Savannah region that they started the national identification registration, our Fulanis who have lived here for over 70 years, 80 years, have been denied. This is the birth set of somebody, a valid birth, a valid birth set, a valid passport, and they have been denied the, birth, uh, the national identification card. And he, they have been denied. I don't know why. The same requirement everybody has before become, um, being registered for the ID. And only full animal has those, those requirements are in being denied. So we want Ken Atifa to come out and explain that in better to rest. If only the full birth set and the password, the Ghanaian passport for full are invalid, 
he should come out and tell us. He described what was happening as total injustice to Fulanis and appealed to the office of the second lady, Samira Baumia, to speak up on the matter. Our forefathers were here long before even independence, long before even the constitution of this country, the first constitution was, was written. And up to now they were telling us, we Ghanaians, then they should go and collect Samira's card. If I, Samira has a card and I'm being denied as a Fulani, it's very hurting. So we are calling the office of the uh, second lady. She should come out and speak about this issue. My father was in the Gold Coast Regiment before even Ghana Armed Forces was formed. So if you are coming to tell me, me being born even in the barracks, that I should go and bring, I should go and bring my great grandfather's birth certificate before I become a Ghanaian, then everybody in Ghana are not Ghanaians. You heard the Martina Bugri's report. Thankfully, we will get to. Um Get some answers from the head of corporate affairs, Francis Palm Detti. Uh, we're grateful for your time here on the Midday News. So why are Fulanese in particular being turned away at these centers? Um, thank you for the opportunity. I just need to clarify um, some error in the reporters. I don't know whether it was um, uh, an issue of missing in translation, a missing in translation issue. Now, you cannot vouch for anybody or an applicant if the applicant has all the requirements. So if an applicant has a birth certificate or a valid passport, that applicant will not require a relative or two other persons to vouch for that person. So I find it a bit strange that an individual is claiming that he was going to vouch for his brother who has all the requirements and then his ID card was taken from him. I'm not sure on the facts of those stories, but it cannot be, it cannot be accurate. If your relative has all the documents is going to register and you are following to vouch for that person it, it doesn't work that way if you have once you have a birth certificate mm -hmm. or a valid passport you will go through the process now on the issue of fulani we do not target any tribe or any group of persons for this registration it is a registration open to Ghanaians, all Ghanaians aged 15 years and above and who a Ghanaian is, is defined in our laws, and it is clear. You must trace your, your citizenship to a parent or a grandparent. Now, on the issue of um, persons who were born prior to 1969, in fact, before August 1969, all such persons would trace their citizenship by birth to a parent they themselves must have been born in Ghana, and they must trace their citizenship to a parent or a grandparent or a great-grandparent who was also born in Ghana. What it then means is that it doesn't matter whether you are not of um, Ghanaian origin. You can be Chinese, you can be Indian, you can be any other nationality. Once you were born before 1969 in Ghana, and a parent or a grandparent or a great grandparent was also born in Ghana before that date. You are a Ghanaian. That's what the law says. So when our officials are interviewing applicants, when you bring a birth certificate or a valid passport, the form that you're supposed to fill will require certain questions to be asked. If in filling the form and the things you say suggest that you are not a Ghanaian by virtue of the position of the law, you will be told, and if you insist on the claim that you are a Ghanaian, there's a, there's a process. It's called a challenge process. That process has to be followed. You would be given two forms. One of the forms you send to the chief of your village where you come from. The other form is given to you to send to the assemblyman in your locality. When those forms are filled, they are attached to the registration form you filled. And all those documents are placed before a committee. The committee is called the district registration review committee. Mm -hmm. The membership is made of a judge, a representative of the Ghana Bar Association, um, and the police divisional or district commander is a member. Okay. Representatives from social welfare, education service, and the traditional authority and the, the religious body are members of that body. But, but Mr. Pambetti, the concern for these groups no, no, is that it looks like it's targeted at them. Uh, they've all gone to the centers and they've been turned away and that's their concern at this point. What do they do? That is when NIE will take an action. NIE on its own cannot deny anybody registration. It is that body that will look at the issues 
and make a determination. If they say that individual is eligible, we'll register the person. If that body says that individual is not eligible, we will not register the person. The person has the avenues to appeal to the regional and to the high court. But I'm saying that anybody who goes to our centers will be taken through the process. It is not targeting any particular type of individual. The Constitution doesn't talk about ethnicity or language or talk about facial description okay. or appearance. It talks about when you were born, who your, your parents are, uh, uh, the area, you feel, the, name of, the citizenship of your parents matter, when you were born matters, and where you were born matters. Those are things we look out for. We are yeah. grateful uh, for that clarification. Mr. Palmdetti will continue this discussion subsequently. That's Head of Corporate Affairs at the National Identification Authority. This is the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. Let's take a quick break. When we return, looming crisis, Ghana Water Company warns of shortage as water level in Wabi Dam in Ashanti region, which supplies about one third of the commodity there, drops in death from 21 feet to 6 feet. I mean, it's getting close to almost a shutdown. They are suffering seriously from this sand winning, and we have to take it serious. Or else Ghanaians will wake up one day to find out that no water is running through our taps. Ghana, so we correct me in pa. And you make us super. Me is super amazing in Ghana because our job is not any better. They won't see how beautiful and high quality your work is. That be what them they use believe you. That be why me too. It be only super same cement that they use. Cement you cement. Cement you pa pa pa. Into here, me crazy in Ghana from me because super. Because me the super same cement and give me the Super same cement is designed to ensure that your buildings stand strong for generations build with super sem cement build your dream your dream you build It's time now for sports on the midday news with Benedict. So, Mr. Benedict, what's in sports? Yes, my final. The major talking point this week in relation to the Ghana Football Association election has been the disqualification, the rejection of Wilfred Osei Palmer's appeal by the Normalization Committee acting as the election committee. Now, Palmer's next move is to file the case with the Court of Arbitration for Sports Das Cars and move former Western Regional Football Association Chairman Kuju Yanka has lauded. This is football. The way you people use your mind to interpret things in football, they may be a movement. Football is not about using your mind, though. It's about using the law, the regulations, and the status. You have the right to appeal. If you appeal and you lose, you have the right to go to cast. After cast, you end. It's just like court. You go to high court, you lose. You go to appeal court, you go to Supreme Court, you lose. It's final. So he has the. I don't know why people will say, say why is Palmer going to cast for the purposes of uh, football? For the purposes of football, that's why he's going to cast. That's what. All right, so that's uh, Kujo Yanka. He is a uh, former chairman of the Western Regional Football Association. Now, Normalization Committee President Dr. Kofi Amwa has been speaking about how crucial and important it was to have conducted an integrity checks on all the persons interested in leading the Football Association. On September 5th this year, a new Ghana Football Association statute has been adopted, approved by FIFA. Part of that statute talks about integrity check, and it is there because the consensus was that we all believe there has to be integrity, transparency in our football affairs. And we are using those in the beginning stages of opening a new chapter to create that awareness, that seriousness, that indispensability. All right, so that's the Normalization Committee President, Dr. Kofi Amwe. A lot of things to look forward to this weekend. Uh, the Black Stars be in action in Senegal. They play against uh, Senegal in uh, the Wafu Cup of Nations. That's the final. They're hoping to defend the title they won two years ago. So we hope and pray that that will happen on Sunday. That's your spot. The things you do in the studio, only those who watch us live on Facebook can see. Now, water supply to Kumasi and other parts of the Ashanti region is under threat as siltation caused by encroachment and pollution hits the Barikesi and Owabi Dams. Ghana water Water Company officials say the Owabi Dam, uh, which supplies about one third of water to the region, has dropped in depth from 21 feet to 6 feet. Prince Apia joined uh, the team from the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority on an inspection tour of the two dam sites and has come through with this report. Millions of residents of Kumasi and surrounding communities depend on Barikesi and the Owabi Dams for water. 
supply capacity of Barikese is 30 million gallons, while Owabi accounts for 80 million gallons a day. However, activities of encroachers, including land development, farming, sand winning, and indiscriminate dumping, threaten existence of the two water sources. Owabi Dam, which used to be 21 feet deep, is now only 6 feet, which reduces its water holding capacity by two thirds. Ashanti Production Manager for Ghana Water Company Limited, Charles Tulasi, briefed the PURC delegation. The dam is gradually getting silted. So the dam, the capacity the dam has to store a lot of raw water will be in future be in jeopardy. Said that the, when it comes to the dry season, we need adequate amount of raw water to treat, will not have it in future. So the yeah, activity is having siltation on the dam, is also introducing pesticides into the water. The more pesticides they introduce, the more chemicals we have to use to remove those pesticides. So it's increasing our production cost. PURC Commissioner Mame Oforidufie says the almost crisis situation can potentially lead to tariff hikes. This has led to a dam which should have a, a depth of 21 feet now coming to six feet, sorted up by sand winning and other human uh, activities. I mean, it's getting close to almost a shutdown. And so it is a very serious situation now because at the end of the day, it impacts the cost of operations, which with any responsible regulator, you will have to use as a pass-through. And we are sounding the alarm now because uh, very soon we will be struggling with water. You have the officials of the Public Utilities Regulatories Commission on the dangers ahead when it comes to water. Now, let's stay a while longer in the Ashanti region because President Ekofado is expected to wrap up his tour of the region today. Lava Femmes Nanaya Ojima has been traveling with him and joins us on the line. We understand the president is in Doma as we speak, addressing the people. What has he been saying? The president at the moment is at Drobonso, where he has been um, addressing the people. And um, before the president spoke, the people here through their chief tabled some concerns before the president and key among them is security issues here and um, the chief cites himself as an example of threats of um, some armed robbers here on the um, Kumase, Kumawu Drobonsu road and it's one of the major concerns they put before the president and also issues with education because there's one community based senior high school here which um, has not been able to commence operation because um, the student, students are unable to get access to them from where the um, Drobonsu community is, and the place is very far. And because of that, no one is um, ready to make that journey. And vehicles do not fly that route frequently. And that's uh, Lava Femmes Nanaya Ojima traveling with President Kufwado in the Ashanti region as he wraps up his tour today. Now let's talk about a very important part of the body, the breasts. Now it's been said many times that it is important that you go to a health facility and get tested whether you have breast cancer or not. What do you, but what do you need to know is that you can actually do this on your own. Well, Joy FM in collaboration with the Trust Hospital is holding a free breast screening exercise today where some women have so far been taught on how to carry out the tests on themselves. My colleague Baba Tando has been interacting with them. The doctor came and they used some machine to check the breast and they told me that I'm okay. So I'm fine but now I'm going to. Okay, so we wish you all the best. You're live on Joy. What's your name? Angelina. Angelina, um, you just finished your test, right? Yes. How was it? It was okay. Were you nervous before doing the test? Yes, I was a bit nervous. Why? Um, it's, it's, it's quite uncomfortable for someone to be touched. Wait, what I'm good. Okay, so how how do they teach you? Okay, so you put your hand at your back. So my left hand at hand mm -hmm. here, that's behind your your head. My head. And then you'll be using your... Um, the opposite hand? To massage it. To massage it. Okay, okay so what are we massaging for? To check if there's anything unusual in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. You do the same thing for the other, the other side. Yes. Awesome. So you see it wasn't uncomfortable. It's not too late to join the breast screening exercise. It's free and will continue up until 2 p.m. here. Other premises of multimedia do come and get tested.
What are people talking on social, about on social media? Are You're still in the bedroom with us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> people are talking about International Day of the Girl Child. And this one is from at Nancy underscore 12, who says, I really appreciate it and we should all stand with the girl. This one is from at AB underscore K, who says, <laughs> hashtag stand with the girl child because and protects their future because they are leaders of tomorrow. The adrenaline rush is on. We can tell that you're still in the bed. They move. On behalf of the entire news team, we wish you a happy uh, weekend. And that's it uh, for the midday news here on Joy 99.7 FM. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFR Power. We live in word with Dr. Mensa Rutabel. This up next.